In this lecture, we're going to look at the anatomy of a long bone. Here's the diaphysis. The diaphysis is the shaft of a long bone. It's comprised of compact bone, which is a very tough, very dense type of bone. On the ends, we have the epiphyses. Uh, closest to the body, we have the proximal epiphysis. And at farther away from the body, we have the distal epiphysis. And don't forget, proximal means closer to the body. Distal means away from the body. And um, the epiphyses are going to have what's called cancellous bone or spongy bone. We could also call it trabecular bone. So there's three names for the same thing. And that's one thing you'll find out about anatomy, that sometimes we have several names for the same thing. Uh, they're constantly updating and changing the names. So it's a good idea to know all the various names. And then um, we have what's called the epiphyseal plate or epiphyseal line. Now this depends on what stage of development this person is. If they are still growing, they are going to have an epiphyseal plate. That's the growth plate. That is going to be made of hyaline cartilage. Now once you stop growing, and that growth plate ossifies or becomes bone, then we call it an epiphyseal line. And, well, let's take a look at this picture for a second. As you see on the left, this is the growing long bone. So we're going to have various epiphyseal plates. If we were to x-ray this, the bone would look broken up at these uh, plates because hyaline cartilage is going to be a soft tissue and the x-rays are just going to pass right through. So the bones are going to be pieced. Now, as you grow, and um, uh, especially, you know, as, as the bones are maturing, that hyaline cartilage is going to be replaced by bone. And again, that's going to leave us with epiphyseal lines. And then we have the metaphysis. Now, meta means middle. And if you notice here, the metaphysis, we have one up here and one down here. The metaphysis is in the middle of the epiphysis and the diaphysis. I know a lot of words here, but uh, just bear with me. Again, the epi means above, so epiphysis. Diaphysis is the shaft, so right in the middle of those two, we have the metaphysis. And... Um, that's going to contain the growth plate and then eventually the growth line after ossification. Now what we also find in a long bone is a medullary cavity. Now this is found in the diaphysis and it's going to be kind of a hollowed out area along the walls of uh, that, uh, that cavity or that uh, diaphysis. Um, we're going to have red marrow, but the main portion of it is going to be hollowed out, and that is going to contain yellow marrow. And I don't know if you've ever bought a, a soup bone before like this, but um, if we slice through it, um, you can see right in the middle here, uh, this kind of soft, mushy stuff. This is the bone marrow. This is yellow marrow. This is what uh, gives flavor to soup. Or if you ever make a bone broth, uh, this is what's going to add uh, flavor uh, to that broth and to that uh, soup. So um, it's predominantly made of fat, basically. And, um, and that's why we call it yellow marrow, because uh, it tends, especially uh, fresh, it's either white or yellow in color. And um, that's going to be for energy storage. Okay. And then surrounding the bone, we have what's called the periosteum. Peri, think of perimeter around the outside. So this is, again, wrapping around um, the outer bone surface itself. Um, and then attaching that uh, is going to be Sharpie's fibers. Uh, the new name is perforating fiber, fibers. Uh, Sharpie was the name of the person that first described this. But uh, they're kind of getting away from uh, names that have a person's name to it. So you're going to hear it also as perforating fibers. 
but here's Sharpie's fibers. And a little bit, we're going to take a look at a, a bone model, and I will show you the periosteum. I'll show you what the Sharpie's fibers look like as well. And again, that attaches the periosteum to the bone itself. And so periosteum is going to be on the outside. Now, if we look at the inside cavities, uh, we're going to find the endosteum. So we're going to find it lining the medullary cavity. We're going to find it lining um, some of the, the holes and canals and things that blood vessels are going to go through. So that would also be lined by endosteum. And so here's just another picture. We have the periosteum forms the outer surface of the bone, and the endosteum lines the medullary cavity, and again, other uh, holes that, uh, and channels that blood vessels would run through. But you can see here that uh, the periosteum is divided up into a couple of different layers. We have a fibrous layer on the outside, and then a cellular layer just below that. And then um, right here in red, that's kind of representing the Sharpie's fibers, holding it in place. Now, here's the thing about periosteum. This is where you're going to find nerve endings. If you've ever whacked yourself in the shin, you know how much that hurts. That's because the periosteum is very close to the surface of the skin. And uh, so it's easy to kind of whack and damage or bruise that uh, periosteum. If you've ever broken a bone and it's really hurt, that's because you've damaged or broke or snapped in half that uh, periosteum. Now here's the thing, it's a little scary, but sometimes uh, a bone tumor can be forming within the bone and we don't know about it until the periosteum either gets stretched, lifted, broken, uh, pulled, anything that's going to disrupt that periosteum, then we're going to have that bone pain. And again, if you've ever broken a bone, you'll know what bone pain feels like. Even a swift kick in the shin will give you an idea what bone pain feels like. And again, that's coming from the periosteum. Now the endosteum here, uh, not the best picture for it. Uh, it's showing uh, kind of wrapping around uh, the trabecula um, which are what makes up the uh, spongy bone here. Uh, probably a better example, though, would be what lines the medullary cavity.